أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته You're listening to Revive FM 94.0 or you're watching it live on Facebook or on YouTube with your host Hassan Shaya in which we take a few moments of contemplation for suhoor and preparation for suhoor and for the next day uh, and it's, saying it's important that um, a Muslim is always in a state of seeking improvement and that there's a constant development or an increasing or a growth in what we do which benefits and that can never be done unless we self-evaluate how would we ever know the points let's let's put religion and religiosity or religious commitments to aside for a moment and even for a business or even for um, anything which you have a long-term goal how would you ever know if you're going to reach them goals or if you're doing well unless there's a, a level of evaluation going on so it's important that we self-evaluate and one of the companions of the beloved alayhi salatu wasalam who um, the prophet said so the next person to enter into here is from ahl jannah and um, he did it on a number of occas uh, occasions is three consecutive sort of occasions um, where um, this one of the Sahaba would walk in and he, when Prophet ﷺ, Prophet ﷺ had, would do that at times where he would uh, tell us of the next person who's going to come in and the next person um, something shortly, something from behind him and even a question which is going to be asked in many cases وسلم, a companion comes to him and this companion is probably in his mind is going to speak to Rasulullah and is thinking of something to say he's thought of something important to say that the Prophet could address and it's about formulating it we can't forget that when gazing upon Rasulullah it's heavy on the individual um, and if anyone who sees the Prophet ﷺ unprepared for it, not knowing that Rasulullah is coming, they'll be they'll be in awe because of his 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 beautiful um, and his 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 awe inspiring majestic beauty, his awe inspiring beauty. So his companion, um, another another one of the companions follows him and wants to understand what this person is doing that Prophet ﷺ has said that this person is from the people of Ahl Jannah to bring closer the hadith and means of the hadith he follows him for up to three days trying to spend more time with him and he sees nothing different to everyone else and what they're doing which is prayer, which is um, you know working, um, um, giving charity and so on and so forth he never saw anything significant so then he asked him yeah, Rasulullah wasallam upon entry upon uh, your entry in, in, uh, in that many times he said that you're the next person to walk in with Ahl Jannah and it's you is there anything different that you do? What is it that you do to, that's made you from the Ahl Jannah? And then the companion doesn't think of it and he says, um, I don't know. And then he's like, oh, okay, I, it, it may be this. Before I go to sleep every night, I forgive everyone. And that's just, that's just beautiful. You know, whoever it is, whatever has happened, if I've been wrong done, if I won't do it, believe me, there's no sleeping that night. He, he's going to go and, and correct it, you know. But this person who's wrong done me, I'm going to forgive everyone and everything. Alas, I sleep with a clean slate. I don't hold any grudges against anyone. So you cannot reach that level of purity and, 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 and growth apart from that. You're evaluating. You know, he he has to think through what he's done throughout the day, and really get to the core of what he's done, what happened, why it happened, what's best for me to do. And under that meanings, you have him acting upon the verse where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, "Fa'fu wasfahu," overlook one another, and and really overlook one another, forgive one another. Allah to hibba an yaghfir Allahu lakum. Do not wish that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgives you. And this evaluation, this self-evaluation which the Sahaba, many of which was which many of the companions would do 
is they would hold themselves accountable or they would why did I go through this why did I do that today uh, should I not have joined that conversation did that conversation was it something which would benefit me or is it an interest of which has got to do with me or it's got nothing to do with me and of no of, of no benefit really going through and, and scrubbing through the uh, the whole day that you've went through you know um, it's like for those who are into editing and you know you, you have a full clip for video editing you have a full clip and then you have to maximize you have to maximize the um, where you see the whole video so that you can see shorter moments and then you look for these errors that you've made if there's errors which are, are there during while you were filming and it's highlighting those errors and correcting them or else what you've done is just you've sent off a whole file where you, you could have corrected so much it could have been much more beautiful Apostle Allah Sallam tells us every night um, our actions that we have done for the day are, are lifted and they've gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala they've gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala what you could have repented from and what good that you could have accumulated what you've done in that day is gone it's, re it's gone to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of course the door of repentance is still open but the overlooking of it if, it's, if, if you have a sin and um, if you've committed sins and, you've, and you haven't seek forgiveness for it um, um, then it, it will remain in that scroll and that's how it go up to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so imagine this, you have your whole day recorded and it's submitted immediately without Allah, without going through it again without going through it again what did I do this morning? how was Fajr? did I wake up before it? could I have woken up before it? did I have enough? You know, do I think one minute could have done so? okay, so then you found a point of improvement and then after what did I do? how was I dealing with my child today? was I a bit harsh? was I a bit too lenient? was I a bit too soft? Um, what's better? what does Allah want from me in this? Um, how can I better my tarbiyah of my children or how can I better my connection with that person said this to me or said this about me and uh, you know how do I feel about that it's, you know that person who said or wrong done me is only because of what's inside them and what's engulfed inside them from um, maybe some things which have happened to them and they're just uh, troubling you but I know the person may be going through some difficult time I know they're good on the inside I, I don't hold anything against them I've forgotten about them I'm not going to tell someone about it why did I go and tell my friend about that and someone was just really going through it highlighting the points of, of weakness highlighting the point of mistakes and going through that all in your mind in a conversation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeking rectification and waking up going to sleep with a goal tomorrow that I'm not going to and honestly a person who practices upon that for a short moment of time let it be three days and five days will see significant differences in their approach and in their dealings and in their connections and their relationships with people and with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so it's to self-evaluate is a really important part and this time along with just before we go into the last few moments before Fajr uh, we can reevaluate and we can set high intentions and good intentions and growth and imagine every time for Suhoor you're awake and you reevaluate and you grow and you seek points throughout the day that you've done something bad or that you could have grown or you could have done different and you do that the next day and you do that the following day 30 days you can be a brand new you and Allah praises, like, it's a praiseworthy thing to always be working on self-development through the lens in which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says to Saharu, he says, have suhoor or eat suhoor for fihi barakah there is barakah or there's blessing within having suhoor Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam even said, even let that be a glass of water um, having some water for suhoor it's, it's sunnah again we're going to have suhoor you know because it's sunnah forget about our, my habit i'm accustomed to not eating anything before i go to sleep or no no i don't have suhoor i soldier out the fasts from you're going against the sunnah that's that's, that's clearly going against the sunnah have suhoor have a glass of water have something with the intention of having suhoor and making that moment of re-evaluation and and preparation um, again the conversations in which we have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and these actions which we seek Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's, it's beautified be, by being in a state of wudu to be in a state of purity um, 
And the Salihin would always have a huge emphasis on remaining in a state of Tahara. And there's a lot of people who complain or who are really afraid of, um, of evil eyes and, 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 and magic and, and all these sorts of things. And a lot of the Salihin would recommend that a person who stays in wudu has a force field around them at all times throughout the day. They are in a state of purity throughout the whole day. Uh, evil eye should be the least of their worries. You know, a person who's, 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 who has this force field of purity, of wudu, of ablution throughout the day, you know, they go to the toilet, they make wudu again. Um, you, you do your prayer, you renew your wudu later on. Just being in that state of wudu, there's no way. You know, if you have that and you have your, 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 your daily protective du'as, there's no way any evil from shaitan, from iblis, from jan can, can, can affect you. It's a force field, it's a protection, this wudu. It's a protection. So being in the state of wudu, re-evaluating, see if, seeking forgiveness, having that suhoor, and then seeking those last moments of repenting and seeking forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seeing how we're going to spend the next day tomorrow. What are we going to do? So you can evaluate yourself and say, I spent five hours or six hours today watching TV shows and movies. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not allow us to be in the state of death while we are fasting and being a complete. As Allah وسلم, said, the difference between a person who remembers Allah and a person who does not remember Allah is like the living and the dead. And we don't want our fast, which we are seeking life. We're seeking to be brought to life, our souls to be brought to life, our hearts to be brought to life, to be toiled and to be soiled with with moments of just hours of just death of no life coming to us because we're watching movies and watching tv shows completely destroying the reward of our fasts so you can intend tomorrow i'm you know this is really it's just the daytime like i, I this is ramadan can i not stop for ramadan and hope that if i can stop for ramadan that it stops completely and here's and here's an Here's, here's, here's how we sometimes set ourselves up for failure. We know this month is the month in which our du'as are accepted or we are given the strength or the, the environment or the, the, there's like an angelic environment all bringing closer to those who are seeking closeness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala being an easier way, a short, a very, a very summarized way for them. And sometimes we might set ourselves up for failure because we want to do good which is good, which is a really good thing that you want to do good and that you want to abandon bad and habits for Ramadan. But sometimes we might set ourselves up for that failure when we intend to stop doing a habit for Ramadan. Because it's the month of Ramadan. Right now you desire to be continuous upon your habit. You desire to be continuous upon your habit. But because it's Ramadan, you want to, you want to respect the month and to stop doing it for Ramadan. You know, you could enter the month or you could be with inside the month and stop the habit with the intention to never go back to it again. And that would be most likely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that could be more closer to your acceptance. But rather, if you've stopped just, for example, you stop listening to music for Ramadan. If you've intended to stop listening to music for Ramadan again, then you just paused it. You haven't intended to stop it. You've paused it. And, it's, and you'll, you'll find yourself continuing. If you want to see the power of Ramadan, have a sincere intention from whichever night it is now, from wherever you are, have a sincere intention to never go back to it again. And, and really be persistent on the door of Allah to allow that to be a reality and for that to continue. And you'll see how worthless that is and how powerful Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in changing things because we call to Allah. We could have a whole life spent, uh, written for us that... We are going to be people who listen heavily to music, for example. And in one of these Ramadans, we make dua and we approach Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of our neediness. And uh, we ask Allah to give us strength of ourselves to not to allow us to rid ourselves of music, for example, this garbage music. You know, that could be changed. Your whole life that was written that you were to be, you would never be able to stop listening to music or music would continue controlling you or whatever. It, it could be changed from a dua that you've made during Ramadan or any other time, a sincere dua where you've asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're persistent, alihu ala Allah, you know, to be that persistent upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in that dua. Just by making that dua, it's changed because that's the only one thing which can change what's been written for you. And you enter Ramadan and you say, this is the month I'm going to rid myself of habits. So we have the last few moments before um, the time for 
uh, for Fajr. And um, it's important that the, the, as, as the wave of the world continues and keeps distracting us and that we hold on to an anchor and we have these different anchors throughout the day which hold us without sinking too deep into um, or going astray it's through, through these times and protecting these times and valuing these times and clenching onto it with your molars which is these times which is now suhoor which is iftar which is after fajr after asr between maghrib and isha just throughout these days if you dedicate that this this is the time which i'm going to read something small in remembrance that's anchoring yourself it's, it's holding yourself at shore while you could have just gone afloat to be in the midst of the ocean alone, nothing to hold on to. Um, so the Prophet ﷺ says, the Sahur of Ainaf is Sahuri Baraka. So have Sahur for in Sahur is Baraka. Um, just a, another hadith to mention where a lot of people may um, may say, you know, when, when, when's the cut off time for Sahur? When do we? When's the cut off time? When should we abstain from it? The, according to the domi, according to the opinions of the fuqaha, um, uh, our, our our scholars, not our contemporary scholars, um, our classical scholars, is that we leave enough time to read fifty ayahs, the duration of reading fifty ayahs, so how long it would take for someone who can read the Quran to read fifty ayahs without speeding too fast and without reading too slow just at a normal moderate speed of reading Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim Maliki Yawm al-Din Iyaka na'abudu wa Iyaka nasta'een Ihdina Sirat al-Mustaqeem Sirat al-Ladhin an'amta alayhim Ghayr al-Maghdubi alayhim Al-Dhalim Like that's the recommended time so it's just like maybe 15 to 20 minutes before the other so that's point number one. That's the sunnah. So the, by the by, when there's like twenty minutes, twenty five, just to be careful, left b- before the fajr adhan, then that adhan, um, then th- that's the best time to have suhoor. Whether it's your cup of water or your cup of tea or whatever you're going to be having for suhoor, um, and the time, the actual cut off time. So the adhan never takes place up until. It's been certain that the time has come in. You can't give an adhan for a prayer up until it's certain that the time has come in. So usually the time has come in by a minute or two before the adhan takes place. So to avoid having anything from that one to two minutes, you know, um, before the adhan. And then if you do have it at that time, then you know that fajr has, the adhan has already gone off. And it's time to, uh, uh, then that would... That would, in, in, you would it would still be wajib for you to fast that day, but you will have to make it up if you continued eating. And there's some people who will go around and say, just continue eating. You know, it's fine. Prophet said, um, don't, let, don't allow Bilal, for example, don't allow Bilal to stop you from eating your food when you hear his adhan. Um, and, and, and other sort of misunderstood hadith is that the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, um, that we fast from dawn to eve. We fast. So to fajr. So fajr linguist is the time where the adhan goes off of fajr. It's the time where the sun has reached the point just below the horizon where it's just about to, where it's just about to peak out, and and and, and there's the the the, the landscape, the, the light of the sun on the on, on the horizon. So, if you eat after the adhan has gone off, signifying that the day has begun, if you broke your fast, is is you still it's wajib upon you to continue your fast, but now you have to make it up because you've eaten during the day. So the adhan has gone off. A signal has khalas, The night has finished. It's day now. So some people may say that you could just continue eating. You don't have to spit it out, and so on and so forth. And don't don't allow. Don't allow that to take place. Don't allow that to ruin your fast and ruin the reward of your fast. Imam Nawawi mentions in his, in his, uh, his, his, uh, his commentary on Sahih Muslim, 
When the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ says, لا عنا أحد منكم أذان بلال Do not let the أذان بلال stop any one of you أو نداء بلال من سحوره To stop you from having your suhoor فإنه يؤذن ينادي ليرجعكم ليرجع قائمكم ويوقظ نائمكم So um, for that his adhan is only to um, to basically prepare you for salah as we know with inside the um, in our locality we only have one adhan usually we only have one adhan and if you're following a timetable it will give you one adhan for fajr typically in the masajid there's two before for, for fajr one is um, signifying the close that uh, that fajr is coming close which is uh, 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 something which um, Bilal, the companion of Prophet um, used to do, and also um, Abdullah bin Maktoum, the blind, the blind muaddin, um, where they would give the, the adhan prior to the fajr adhan. So what what Imam Nawi says is, um, uh, so he says that inna ma yuaddin bilayl, inna ma yuaddin. Bilal, ليعلمكم بأن الفجر ليس ببعيد. The only reason why I, uh, Bilal is giving you the adhan or giving the adhan is that to tell you that fajr is not far away. So quickly finish up what you need to finish up. Um, ف, فيرد القائم المجتهد إلى راحته لينام غفوة ليصبح نشيطا أو يوتر إن لم يكن أوتر. So it means for the person who's doing his qiyam to start signifying, okay. When you finish our qiyam, that's when it's sunnah to pray the witr. So now, it's, you know, you pray your witr and if you're going to take a 10-15 minute um, rest to do so, or a short rest. So some people may say, okay, that's the adhan. So whenever you hear the adhan, don't let that stop you from having your sahur, um, which, is, which is not, which is a, um, an opinion not supported by the madhahib al-arba'ah. And it's really important that you abstain from having anything to at least 20 minutes, 30 minutes before the Fajr Adhan. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for tawfiq. And that tomorrow's fast is better than today's fast. And Allah accepts us, us accepts our fast and our prayers. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salam wa rasulullah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. Allah rabbana taqabul minna innaik anta samir alim. Wa tub alayna innaik anta tawab al-rahim. Allahumma inna zalamna fasana wa lam taghfir lana wa tarhamna wa nakunna minal khasirin. Allahumma inna salaka ziyadatan fi al-deen. مباركة في العمر وصحة في الجسد وصحة في الرزق وتوبة قبل الموت وشهادة عند الموت ومغفرة بعد الموت وعفوا عند الحساب وأمانا من العذاب ونصيبا من الجنة وارزق النظر إلى وجهك الكريم اللهم يا مقلب القول وصار ثبت قلوبنا على دينك ثبتنا على الحق والهدى اللهم وفقنا لما تحبه وترضى اللهم اجعلنا من أهل الخير اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا واستر عيوبنا واكشف كروبنا وغديرنا وحاجاتنا اللهم انظر إلينا في هذه الوقت المبارك واجعلنا وفقنا لمن كان مستغفرا فغفرت له ومن كان مسترحما فرحمته اللهم انظر إلينا وصفنا من جميع الدنس ومن الذنوب ومن المعاصي ومن الآثام الذي يحجبنا عن التحقق بمعرفتك الخاص ولا محبتك الخالصة وصلى الله وسلم على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والحمد لله رب العالمين You're listening to Revive FM 94.0 with your host Hassan Shaya Take care. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Allahumma inni nabaytu bi sawm ghadim min shahr Ramadan al-lazhi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. Allahumma taqabbal minna haza al-sawm bi hurmati al-sayyid waladi adnan. Ya azizu ya ghaffar, ya musta'anu ya rahman.
صلی علی سیدنا و مولانا محمد و علی آله فی الاولین اللهم صلی علی سیدنا محمد و علی آله و صحبه فی الاخرین اللهم صلی و سلم و بارک علی سیدنا محمد و علی آله و صحبه فی الملأ الاعلى الى یوم الدین اللهم رب هذه الدعوة التامة والصلاة القائمة آت سيدنا ومولانا محمد الوسيلة والفضيلة والدرجة الرفيعة وابعثه مقاما محمودا الذي وعته وارزقنا شفاعته يوم القيامة إنك لا تخلف الميعاد